Good morning everybody. It is Tuesday morning and we come together to read God's Word. This morning we're going to be reading Acts chapter 27, getting near the end of the story of Acts and the story of Paul's journey. So let's read 20, chapter 27 together. When it was decided they would sail for Italy, Paul and some other prisoners were handed over to a centurion named Julius, who belonged to the Imperial Regiment. We boarded a ship bound, a ship from Adramatium, about to sail for ports along the coast of the province of Asia, and we put out to sea. Antichrist, a Macedonian from Thessalonia, was with us. The next day we landed at Sidon, and Julius, in kindness to Paul, allowed him to go to his friends so that they might provide for his needs. From there we put out to sea again, and passed to the lee of Cyprus because the winds were against us. When we had sailed across the open sea off the coast of um, Cilicia and Pamphylia, we landed at Myra in Lycia. There the centurion found an Alexandrian ship sailing for Italy and put us on board. We made slow headway for many days and had difficulty arriving off Sindus. When the winds did not allow us to hold our course, we sailed to the lee of Crete, opposite Salmon. We moved along the coast with difficulty and came to a place called Fair Havens, near the town of Lycia. Much time had been lost and sailing had already become dangerous because by now it was after the Day of Atonement. So Paul warned them, men, I can see that our journey is going to be disastrous and bring great loss to the ship and cargo and to our own lives also. But the centurion, instead of listening to what Paul had said, followed the advice of the pilot and of the owner of the ship. Since the harbour was unsuitable to winter in, the majority decided that they should sail on, hoping to reach Phoenix and winter there. This is a harbour in Crete, facing both southwest and northwest. When a gentle wind began to blow, they saw their opportunity, so they weighed anchor and sailed along the shore of Crete. Before very long, a wind of hurricane force, called the Northeaster, swept down from the island. The ship was caught by the storm and could not uh, head into the wind, so we gave way to it and we were driven along. As we passed the lee of a small island named um, Clauda, we were hardly able to make the lifeboat secure. So the men hoisted it aboard. Then they passed ropes onto the ship itself to hold it together, because they were afraid that they would run aground on the sandbars of Sirtis. They lowered the sea anchor and let the ship be driven along. We took such a violent battering from the storm that the next day they began to throw cargo overboard. On the third day they threw the ship's tackle overboard with their own hands. When neither sun nor stars appeared for many days and the storm continued raging, we finally gave up all hope of being saved. After they had gone a long time without food, Paul stood up before them and said, Men, you should have taken my advice not to sail for Crete. Then you would have been spared yourselves this damage and loss. But now I urge you to keep your courage because not one of you will be lost. Only the ship will be destroyed. Last night an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I serve stood beside me and said, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand tried before Caesar. And God has graciously given you the lives of all who sail with you. So keep up your courage, men, for I have faith in God. It will happen just as he told me. Nevertheless, we must run aground on some island. On the 14th night, they were still being driven across the Adriatic Sea, when about midnight the sailors sensed that they were approaching land. They took soundings and found that the water was 40 metres deep. A short time later they took soundings again and found that it was 30 metres deep. Fearing that we would be dashed against the rocks, they dropped four anchors from the stern and prayed for daylight. In an attempt to escape the ship, the sailors let the lifeboat down into the sea, pretending they were going to lower some anchors from the bow. Then Paul said to the centurion and the soldiers, Unless these men stay with the ship, you cannot be saved. So the soldiers cut the ropes and held the lifeboat. 
that hailed the lifeboat and let it drift away. Just before dawn, Paul urged them all to eat. For the last 14 days, he said, you have been in constant suspense and have gone without food. You haven't eaten anything. Now I urge you to take some food. You need it to survive. Not one of you will lose a single hair from his head. After he said this, he took some bread and gave thanks to God in front of them. Then he broke it and began to eat. They were all encouraged and ate some food themselves. Together, there were 276 of us on board. When they had eaten as much as they wanted, they lightened the ship by throwing the grain into the sea. When daylight came, they did not recognise the land, but saw a, beach with sa saw a bay with sandy beach, where they decided to run the ship aground if they could. Cutting the sea anchors, they left them in the sea, at the same time untied the ropes that held the rudders. Then they hoisted the foresail to the wind and made for the beach. But the ship struck a sandbar and ran aground. The boy struck fast and would not move and the stern was broken to pieces by the pounding of the surf. The soldiers planned to kill the prisoners to prevent any of them from swimming away and escaping. But the centurion wanted to save spare Paul's life and kept, those from carry kept them from carrying out their plans. He ordered those who could swim to jump overboard first and get to land. The rest were to get there on planks or on other pieces of the ship. In this way, everyone reached land safely. Amen. The end of Acts chapter 27. Again, another amazing chapter when you think about it. Um, the faith that Paul had, the trust in God, uh, that nobody would be lost. And I'm sure the soldiers thought he was, and the other soldiers thought he was absolutely mad. They probably wondered what experience he had of sailing in such conditions, what experience he had of storms and shipwrecks. Um, and quite rightly so, he wouldn't have had that experience, but he still trusted. Even though he hadn't been in that situation before, he believed what God had told him, and he believed that God would be with them right the way through and look after them and take care of them. It challenges us in our faith. Do we trust? Do we have enough faith? Do we believe? Um, you know, it, Paul, Paul was just incredible that way. Um, whenever he committed to something, he just kept going at it. Um, and he wouldn't give up until he had achieved what he, he believed he'd been sent to do. And that was exactly what he did. Maybe this week's going to be difficult for, for you. Um, maybe you're going back to work this week. There's some businesses that have started back. Um, some of us have been told they can start back on Friday. Maybe there's fear and trepidation there. And, and people are telling you to trust, trust them. It'll be fine, you know. It's hard to do that. But as we do step back out into the world, let's just pray for God to, to give us strength and courage, to give us sense that um, we don't take risks unnecessarily, um, but that we do things in a very considerate way and measured way. Uh, but at the same time, having faith that he will continue to look after us and help us and guide us through this all. So let's just pause and pray. Heavenly Father, thank you once again for another glorious day. Another day whenever we come together. Another day whenever we can worship you. Another day whenever you're very much by our sides. Lord, thank you. Thank you that we are never alone. No matter how empty a house may be, no matter how lonely physically it might seem, you are always with us. And Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, just help us to trust you during this time and um, that you will continue to look after us and care for us. And Lord, and for those who are heading back to work, just, just be with them and help them. Lord, it's going to be natural that there's fears and worries. Help them to hand those fears and worries over to you and just be by their side. Lord, for those who face daunting things this week, um, whether it be hospital and surgery, whether it be the return to work, whether it will be a bereavement, Lord, whether it be memories of things that have happened, just be close to people, I pray. Help them to turn to you and to draw strength from you. Help them to just to tell you what's on their hearts. Help us to do that, Father, knowing that you will hear us, that you will draw alongside us and that you will help us. So, Lord, thank you. Continue with us now, we pray in Christ's name. Amen.
Thanks, folks, for joining with me. Um, tomorrow morning, we will be reading the last chapter from Acts, chapter 28. Um, so join me for that. That'll be great to do that and finish off the story of the book of Acts. See you tomorrow morning. Take care. God bless.